10 takes left. We're down to the final 10, all still focused on where certain players stand in the history of the time. The biggest challenge debates answered right here and now. Let's get started. Number one, challenge Mount Rushmore is as follows and cannot be changed. Veronica, Mark Long, Coral, and The Miz. This is not the greatest of all time because that's not what the real Mount Rushmore is. These are the most important and impactful stars from the early years of the show. These four are the reason why the show became what it did and deserve recognition for that. Without Veronica, Mark, Coral, and The Miz, the show never finds its identity, never finds a big audience, never becomes the amazing franchise that it has been for nearly a quarter of a century now. So, please, I'm pleading with you, stop saying Who's your challenge, Rushmore, when you really mean who are the four best players of all time? Those are separate questions. Those are separate things. These four are the Rushmore, and that is that. Special shout out to Eric, Timmy, Theo, and Dan, who could maybe have a smaller rock statue at the foot of this theoretical Rushmore deserve at least that placement. Moving on, number two. Another outside submission, this one from the great Dylan Deckard of the Chillin' with Dylan podcast, another fantastic podcast within the Challenge and Reality TV community. Go give his show a follow and listen if you want to hear truly magnificent challenge takes like this one he sent over to me. Quote, Frank Sweeney would have been the GOAT if he never retired. End quote. (sighs) Everything about this is perfect. The challenge misses Frank Sweeney. That is for sure. And I say that knowing that Frank like many a challenger before and since, has a few moments on the show I'm sure he'd like to take back, but that dude was a competitor who could pop off at any moment's notice. That's a recipe for success in the challenge house. Now, did Frank retire? Did he get himself banned for spilling too much tea in an era where production was very insecure and very much enforcing some strict NDA rules? We may never truly know, but I know one thing. Dylan is right. If Frank did more seasons, he had a shot at GOAT status. Certainly had a shot... So wild, it very well may be true. I don't know how serious of a take it was, but I love it all the same. Thank you, Dylan, for the submission. Number three, the best players to do at least three challenges and never win are Leroy, Cam, Polly, Joss, Jen, and Kellyanne in that order. They all had what it takes. It just never panned out. Leroy is the unfortunate title, or fortunate, because Leroy is the man. He may never have won a title, a challenge title, but he won every single challenge fan's heart. He has the highest Q score of any challenger ever. That has to matter for something, right? So just because he holds the title of best challenger to never win doesn't mean that he's not the freaking man, doesn't mean that all of those folks, Leroy, Cam, Polly, Josh, Jen, and Kellyanne, deserve and know to have what it takes to be a champion. If they kept coming back and trying, they would get it done. Number four. Let's talk about some champions, specifically Jamie Murray, who has the best challenge resume of all time and is the best challenge player that no one ever talks about. He's a three for three champ. He was the best player on his team in all three of those seasons. He made it all look super duper easy, and he seemed to also have a blast while doing it and made sure to say next to no words on camera. Long live the outlaw. Jamie Murray should be mentioned more three by three champ. Number five. The greatest single season performance of all time is Landon on Fresh Meat 2. Now, first and foremost, this is a complicated take because you got to give Carly her flowers. This is no shots at Carly. She is amazing. She truly pushed herself to 100% of her abilities and won that shit right along with Landon. For the full take of this, go back and listen to best seasons ever that I did with the Challenge Fandom Podcast. But the short version is this. Landon, at the end of the day, took the last pick in the draft and won the whole damn thing. He navigated the West versus Kenny dynamic damn near flawlessly, even though he despised making deals or playing strategically. He was obviously the best male competitor there the whole time, and he was the only partner that could have had the patience, support, and wherewithal to help Carly push herself to that 100% mark without passing out. It's an incredible win. It's the best single performance the show has ever seen. Number six. The best pairs of all time for each gender combo are as follows. Paula and Emily on Rivals 2, Wes and CT on Rivals 2, and Jordan and Sarah on X's 2. On the female-female pairing front, 
Paula is so underrated. It just makes me sick. Let me get that out of the way first. Her and Emily, I'll take. I think they're a little bit better than Paula and Ev, but it's close. Kara and Laurel, a few years later, would have maybe taken the crown, but as it stood when we got these pairings, Paula and Emily was the best female duo of all time. CT and Wes, same season, same result. Two legends, an unfair pairing, honestly. And they knew that when they put those two together, but they needed to get CT that win, and they needed to get Wes another win as well. Yes, I said earlier, Jordan and Marlon probably would have beaten them if not for the purge twist in that final, but they didn't. And I'd still take this duo in any given season versus any men's pairing in the history of the show. Third, then, Jordan and Sarah, same goes for them. Two kick-ass competitors at the peak of their powers. This is the easiest pairing to lock in for me with the only real competition being Evan and Coral on fresh meat if they wouldn't have gotten injured, but we'll never know. So Sarah and Jordan, you're the best dual combo ever. Number seven, our final outside submission comes from at Benjamin2810 on Instagram. Ben wants it to be known that, quote, Ashley Millionaire Mitchell is the female GOAT, end quote. A lot of people weighed in on who the GOAT was, both on the male side and the female side. Ashley's name certainly came up more than once. She's got a stellar resume mixed with some real flame-out performances as well. No doubt about it, she's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I appreciate the take from Ben, but I don't know if I can put her number one, which leads me to number eight. The best female players of all time are Cara Maria, Evelyn, Laurel, Veronica, Paula, Emily, Schramm, Ashley, Mitchell, and KC Clark. That's tier one. It's an exclusive club. Bicker about who goes where if you're listing them, but you cannot argue that these eight women are the best to have ever done it. I won't accept any other applications. That is tier one. However, if I did list them out and I had to put someone number one, bonus take because we'll end up at more than 10 and I don't want to do that. Bonus coming at you. Cara Maria is the female GOAT. Nine finals is nine finals. Bloodlines is a way more impressive win than you remember. You just only remember her saying cousin. Forget that part. Remember how impressive running that game was start to finish. Vendettas is an insanely impressive win. The longevity, the resume, the memorable moments. It's got to be Cara Maria. She is the female GOAT of the challenge. Moving on to number nine then, the other side, the best male players of all time are as follows. Jordan, Banana, C.T. Landon, Wes, Theo Vaughn, Timmy Beggy, Abram Durrell, Derek, The Miz, and Jamie Murray. That's the top 11 in some order. Same as for the women, that's just tier one. You can put it in any order you want. It's an exclusive club. Those 11 are all legends, tier one, best of the best. All different cases for being the best or better than the next. But if I had to only pick one of those 11, Number 10, the final take in the 100 challenge takes for the 100th podcast episode is the debate's over. Bananas is the GOAT. I'm sorry. I know most of you don't want to hear that. I know most of you have decided to believe something totally different, but Bananas is the GOAT. CT is second. That's just the facts. You may like CT more than you do Bananas, but it doesn't change history. But the Bananas backpack, you say? Incredible moment by a beast of a man who I'm saying is the second best person in the history of this show and game. But I counter with the final elimination on Rivals. I counter with the final on X's one. I counter with the three puzzle final elimination on free agents, one-on-one, mano e mano. A lot more goes into the argument than that, obviously. Trust me, I know how fraught of an argument it may be for some. And one day, when I've got more time, I'll do the full breakdown and convince those who disagree that they are just being silly. But today, we don't have time. So you just have to trust that this historian has done the homework twice over, run the numbers thrice over, studied every nuance and angle to the debate. And every single time, the answer is the same. Love him or hate him, Johnny Bananas is the challenge goat. Woo! Those were some hot takes, huh? What'd I get right? What do you think I got wrong? I know you disagree with at least one to 10 of the 10 different things you just heard. Let me know in the comments below. Right, wrong, missing? Is there anything on this topic that should have been a part of this? Please 
let me know. I love feedback. I love banter. Let's talk it out. And if you like what you saw, hit that follow button, subscribe to this page. A lot more good stuff coming your way. And then these links that are about to pop up, they'll take you right on in to another set of 10 takes. You don't even have to wait. They're all right here, 100 in total. Enjoy. Thanks for being here. I'll talk to you again soon.